Well, everybody, this, if you don't know what it is, shame on you. This is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. And for a lot of people, including us, this is one of, if not the best, all-in-one liquid coolers on the market right now. If you don't believe me, you can check out our all-in-one liquid cooler roundup right up here. But look, Arctic looked at this thing and they said, this is not the ultimate cooler that we can create. There's some areas to improve. So what have they come up with? Well, this is the Liquid Freezer 3. And in many ways, it takes what the Freezer 2 did and improves and evolutionizes it in almost every conceivable way. This might be the new all-in-one liquid cooling champ. So pushing aside what's actually changed, the Freezer 3's price is the real star of the show here for me. Normally, it ranges from 105 US for the basic black 240 millimeter version, all the way up to 164 bucks for the white 420 millimeter with ARGB lighting. And yes, Arctic is finally coming out with white AIOs. Those are already super aggressive prices in today's market. But for the next few weeks, Arctic's run an introductory sale, just like they did with the P12 Max. So you can get the basic black 240 millimeter version for just $77 US and the highest end 420 millimeter with all the RGB bling for less than most companies sell their entry level AIOs for. Yeah, that's a few bucks more than the original Freezer 2 series sold for, but that was years ago. And I've left links for all of those coolers in the description down below. Those links help us make content like this. So if you think that you want to buy one of these, by all means, click through one of those and we can continue making some cool content like this video. So let's go through some of the differences between the second and third generation coolers. Arctic's huge 38 millimeter thick radiator largely remains unchanged. Though water channel and fin heights have increased from 26 millimeters to 32 millimeters. Meanwhile, it has the same fin density, size, and overall design as the Freezer 2. The same thing, unfortunately, goes for the fans. They're still the standard P12s in both black and with ARGB, depending on the cooler you choose. And the lighting on those fans, well, it looks a bit dated compared to some of the other stuff out there, but at this price, it is what it is. I know we all hoped that the new P12 Maxes would roll out with Arctic's next generation freezer series, but they're not due to two factors. First of all, they aren't available with RGB and they would simply drive up the overall cost. So I'm guessing Arctic's figuring that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it's nice to see the fans come pre-installed and pre-wired. So no need to mess around with a ton of screws. The tubes run about 450 millimeters, which is one of the longest on the market, but now they're made out of much more flexible material. That's good news since the Freezer 2 was a pain in the butt to get into more confined spaces. And you know what's amazingly flexible for its size? This case from Thermaltake. Somewhat tiny, but mighty. The classic vending machine case is now slightly bigger to support your massive GPU obsessions with a built-in stabilizer clip and a 280mm all-in-one cooler with a 140mm fan fitment on all mounts. The best part is it can't fit a micro ATX motherboard with some limitations, but the full-size ATX power supply is not a problem, we have fine dust filters everywhere, and that interesting LCD panel for memes or system info complementing all the hardware on display. The new Tower 200 in 5 colors, check it out below. Anyways, while the fans and the radiator assembly haven't changed all that much compared to the Freezer 2, where all of Arctic's focus was, was basically in the new pump head design. It has been revised from start to finish and there's some really interesting stuff going on here. This one gets a cleaner overall look, rotatable tubes and a completely revamped design. The entry level black versions don't get any lighting whatsoever and the overall look might be a lot cleaner than the Freezer 2's, but it does look a little bit like a turbine engine's intake. Any of the RGB equipped models come with integrated lighting below that turbine looking thing and it plays up the blade effect, I guess that's what you could call it. Personally, I think it looks better than the Freezer 2, but it might not be your jam. For people who like the idea of an integrated fan on the previous generation model, it's still there, but it offers a much broader, almost 360 degree cooling zone, and it's a bit larger, which cuts down on its noise. But then again, you can't really hear it anyways. I also love the addition of a three to one adapter here, so you can control the pump, main fans, and VRM fan individually, instead of running everything off a single cable. And the RGB, well, it is what it is. There's nothing spectacular here, but look, if you're out to get the sexiest, blinged out 
about AIO, you're going to spend a lot more for it. And for people who might have super tight ITX builds that fight for every millimeter of vertical space, the overall pump head has grown in height too, by a lot. And that is something you absolutely need to take into account. All of those things are held in place by a magnetic cap that hides the mounting system as well as the pump. Oh, and that pump's all new too. It runs quieter even though it has a higher top end speed than its predecessor. And even though the pump can be controlled via PWM, I wouldn't actually recommend you do that because you can actually run it at 100% speed without sacrificing all that much in terms of noise because this is one of the quietest pumps we've ever come across on an AIO. Let's have a listen. So when it comes to most aspects and the overall physical design of this, Arctic listened to all the feedback that people had and improved this thing for the better. But to me, the biggest change is not what you're seeing here. The biggest change is the mounting hardware. And that has been, it has gone through an evolution of epic proportions. Because look at this. This is the Freezer 2's hardware, while this is the Freezer 3's. It's infinitely simpler, but there's also some very, very unique things, like a contact frame for Intel CPUs. These things have been available for years in the aftermarket, but this is the first time I'm seeing one included on a cooler. While it does complicate the installation process a bit, it replaces the stock ILM or independent loading mechanism, and you'll need to use the included Torx head screwdriver to do it. But the process is pretty straightforward. Either way, it's supposed to straighten out processors that are potentially bowed, which improves overall mounting consistency between the cooler's base plate and the CPU's heat spreader. I've actually tested contact frames in the past. You can find that video right up here. But when push comes to shove, these things can either be very, very helpful for CPU temperatures if your processor is slightly bowed, or they don't really have any effect whatsoever. On the flip side of that coin, they don't actually hinder performance either, at least not in our testing. But maybe unfortunately for Arctic and for this video, none of the CPUs that we use in any of our test platforms here at the office have exhibited all that much boring, or at least enough bowing for the contact frame to have any net benefit. But look, props to Arctic for actually including one of these because they have gone absolutely above and beyond. On AMD, well, the offset mount is back, which is something that helped make the Freezer 2 one of the best all-in-one liquid coolers we've ever tested on AM5 CPUs. But instead of two hole positions that allow for either a standard or offset positioning, there's only one, so you are obligated to use the offset. In most situations, that isn't a problem, but it also leads to the Freezer 3 simply being incompatible with some motherboard boards since it can't be rotated 90 degrees. So the tubes can smash right into some taller M.2 heat sinks. The only solutions would be to flip the pump head 180 degrees or remove the M.2 heatsink altogether. To clear as much confusion that this causes as possible, Artix added a product searcher on their website. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Overall though, Artix has perfected every single part of their installation process. And if you remember, that installation process was my only major critique for the Freezer 2. But look, with all of that out of the way, I wanted to get right into testing on the Intel platform, starting with gaming, because that is probably what most of you guys are gonna be doing with your systems anyways. And straight from the jump, the Freezer 3 delivers some absolutely amazing results. Not only are they one to two degrees better than its predecessor, but out of the 13 240 millimeter AIOs we've tested, the only one that consistently beats it is the T30. And that thing costs almost double its price. So what we're looking at, at least on an Intel system when gaming, is an incremental upgrade, but one that makes already good performance look phenomenal. Meanwhile, switching to an all-core workload turns the results upside down. The Freezer 3 improves on the Freezer 2, but it's at best a middle-of-the-pack performer here, beaten out by options like the Frozen Edge, which costs less, and the Nucleus that runs about the same as the Freezer 3's regular price. One of the main challenges here seems to be the fans. Without those being improved in any way, the changes to the pump and radiator end up resulting in minor benefits. Moving on to 253 watts, well, with such low speed 
speed fans and a massive radiator, the Freezer 3 gets into the top five in low noise performance, but then at 38 decibels and higher, it starts lagging a bit behind some of the other options. But look, Arctic's focus has always been on delivering the best performance at whisper quiet noise levels. So mission accomplished, I guess. It's also important to remember that less than four degrees separates most of the 13 coolers we've tested. So in this situation, at least, unless you want to spend big on the T30, you won't see many tangible benefits from one to another. Unfortunately, just like the Freezer 2, Arctic's latest 240 millimeter AIO can't get under Intel's T-junction when all the 13900K's limits are completely removed. But if we drill down into clock speeds, the Freezer 3 actually delivers some impressive numbers relative to its price, especially at 36 dB, where it matches or beats some coolers that cost a whole lot more. And what happens if you have the Freezer 2? Should you upgrade to the Freezer 3? Well, there's absolutely no way you should have any FOMO over these numbers, since for all intents and purposes, these two coolers perform almost identically. And those are the Intel results, at least ours, because I'm sure that as you're watching this video, there are other reviews out there that are showing some spectacular improvements between the Freezer 2 and the Freezer 3 on the Intel platform. And that simply comes down to the contact frame doing what it's supposed to do. Our CPU is very much in a flat situation where the contact frame will have minimal, if any, benefits. Meanwhile, there are tons of documented cases out there of slightly bowed CPUs, and I'm sure some other reviewers are going to experience exactly that. So the contact frame will, of course, have a massive benefit for them. So what we're left with are the minor evolutionary changes Arctic did that affect the actual cooler's performance. And those obviously don't impact cooling in a noticeable way, at least, Again, not on our Intel testing platforms, but when it comes to AMD, well, that's where, at least for Arctic, at least the rubber really hits the road. Starting with gaming, the Freezer 2 was already good, but the third version is absolutely insane. At that low noise level sweet spot, it's the best cooler we've ever tested here. And moving on from there, the only thing that can beat it is the LT520. And while that deep cool is untouchable at higher RPM levels, the Arctic still gets awfully close. And for now, at least, it'll have a much better price too. Move outside gaming though, and the Freezer 3 really starts to dominate on a 7600X in an all-core workload. It even consistently beats the Ryujin 3, and remember, that AIO is one of the most expensive on the market today. Meanwhile, it also stays comfortably ahead of the LT520 here. But I also have to remind everyone that the scale of our line graphs might make some of these gaps look massive. And yet, if you look a bit closer, the difference between the Freezer 3 and the worst cooler we've tested here is only about 4.5 degrees, while the delta between it and the Freezer 2 is just 1.3 degrees. So while Arctic's evolutionary approach definitely does lead to some consistent improvements over the previous generation, sometimes more than others, they shouldn't cause anyone with a liquid Freezer 2 to run out and buy the new one. Then again, seeing a sub $100 cooler absolutely destroy nearly everything else out there, well, that's a good feeling because as we move upwards in the Ryzen CPU stack and heat increases, the gaps between many of these coolers end up widening more and more. And yes, even with the lava hot 7950X, the Freezer 3 still manages to beat or match the T30 and Ryujin 3, two AIOs that cost more than double what it does, if you can even find them. And sure, you're only looking at less than a degree lower than the Freezer 2, but hey, at least it's something. Well, that is if you call half a degree something, because in most tests, that's just a rounding error. I mean, sure, there were some minor updates, but they weren't enough to distinguish one liquid freezer from another in this test. And as with all of these reviews, there's one last thing I wanted to try, and that is some fan normalized testing with Arctic's own P12 Max, because if that roundup that we talked about before showed us anything, it's that these thick boy radiators that Arctic is using, they benefit in a massive way from the increased static pressure afforded by better fans than the regular P12s that are currently being used on there. Well, those P12 Maxes, while they did lower temperature by almost 
three degrees in our Intel limits test, every other cooler except the T30 gets noticeable improvements too. Actually, the temperature drop is almost identical to the Freezer 2s. That simply means the Freezer 3's competitive positioning doesn't really change in a fan normalized situation with the P12 Maxes. So with all that out of the way, where do I ultimately stand on the Freezer 3? And let's be honest, Arctic had a massive mountain to climb when it came to finding anything to improve upon with the Freezer 2 because that was a legendary cooler. But what they did here is not necessarily increase overall performance unless maybe you're running a slightly bowed CPU and that contact frame makes that massive difference for you. What they did is they simply focused on the user friendliness and to make this more appealing to more people. What that led to is a pump head that looks a lot less controversial. There's rotatable fittings. The tubes are a lot more flexible. The fans come pre-installed and the list goes on and on. The installation process has also been rationalized and simplified. You get an AMD offset mount alongside bananas cooling numbers and an Intel contact frame, which didn't do anything for us, but it'll be an immense help for some folks. And even without that frame having an effect on our specific processor, the Freezer 3 is still super competitive on LGA 1700. And when you package all of that into one product, this thing gets our damn good award. And you know what? Even if its price is that $105 that is the original starting price for this and not the sub $80 price category that for the next couple of weeks at least, this thing is gonna find itself fighting in, the Arctic Freezer 3 also gets the damn good value award. What Arctic has done here is they've bucked so many trends that we see prevailing in the cooler space. That means higher prices for mediocre performance, but not with this thing at all. Yes, I know everybody is probably screaming at their screen about, hey, what about the P12 Maxes? Why aren't these things part of the Freezer 3 kit? Well, there is a sort of positive side to this whole thing. Right now you can buy the 240 millimeter version of the Freezer 3, remove its fans, replace them with P12 Maxes and still come out a lot cheaper than 99% of the other AIOs out there in the 240 millimeter category. And with that combination, you are guaranteed to have some absolutely crazy performance at an amazing price. So anyways, that's all for me. In this video, I hope that you enjoyed our first individual 240 millimeter AIO review, and I will definitely see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.